want to talk to you just for a few minutes, if you would um, kind of bear with me here today about what God is doing. Now, <clears throat> if you're new with us today, this would be just kind of an insight for you, and just for a moment into all that God has done. We're a three-year-old church, and, and, and it's been an amazing journey. It's been a tumultuous up-and-down journey. It's been full of faith and excitement and also full of fear and craziness. And um, we're in a season right now where, where I just want to kind of call all of us together for a moment. I know there's many of you that are new. Most, many of you that have been here for a while, you're going to understand some of these things. Some of you new people, just hang in there with me. You'll get to know what kind of family, what kind of team we are as we, as we progress together uh, through the weeks and months to come. But, but two weeks from now is Easter. And this is, I don't know if you understand for us as a church, I mean, this is probably the biggest opportunity that we have as a church throughout the year to make an impact on our city. And specifically with our kids. I know that we share, showed kind of a, a cute little funny video before service or whatever, but uh, I just want you to understand the heart of what God has given us the opportunity. I mean, several hundred kids are going to be impacted at Easter this, this year. We're going to do two Friday night, Good Friday services. They're going to be different then the Easter service are going to be kind of connected, but different. And at that Good Friday service, kids are going to have an amazing time, a glow party. It's going to be super fun. And then on Easter Sunday, we're going to do five Sunday services to make room for all the people that you crazy people are inviting and sharing your faith with. And so um, we've got some work to do to, to pull off seven services in, in a couple of weeks. And Here's what we need. We need you to really pray about your part in, in, in making these seven services happen, and specifically with our kids. Right now, there's about 125, 130 people that serve every single weekend to help take care, inspire, love, and encourage our kids all throughout this building, all throughout this complex. That's a lot of people. In addition to that, for these extra services, we need another 100 people to step up and serve just for that weekend, just to say, hey, I can jump in a class. Classroom. I don't know what I'm doing, but if you show me what to do, I'll high five kids and we'll have a lot of fun. I'll give out candy. Can I be the candy guy? I want to give out candy. Kids love the candy person, right? You can do that, and, and we need you to do that. And so I want you to respond today on that connection card and go, I want to serve. Just check the serving box. And then just write right next to it, kids, Easter, something like that, so we know what you're talking about. If you want to serve in other places, check that, and we'll call you this week, and we'll, we'll, we'll help you take those steps. But in addition to that uh, serving, I also want you to understand candy. We need a lot of candy. We're going to bless these kids, and they're going to remember this Easter carnival forever. And so we want to make the celebration of the century the day, the day that Jesus rose from the dead. That's a pretty amazing day, isn't it? And uh, we want our kids to remember it that way as well. And so please, 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 please stop by the store, buy a bag of individually wrapped without peanuts or nuts candy, because we want to not have to go, you know, check allergies on every kid or whatever. Um, if you would bring that either by the office this week or bring it with you next Sunday, we got bins out here that are starting to fill up in the lobby. Uh, we need a way more than what we've got. We've got just a few um, bags that have come in and we just need a ton. And so uh, I just want to encourage you to really consider being a part of making Easter in our kids' world amazing. Our Life for Kids team has been doing so good putting this together. It's going to be super fun. And I want to, I want to, I want to kind of just zoom out a little bit more just so you understand what, what's going on. I want to celebrate with you a little bit. The church has grown in the last six weeks massively, over 26%, in fact. I mean, that's like 125 more people than we ever had before in the last six weeks. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? You'll get excited about this. 13 people were baptized just last week, just last week, and... and uh, that makes 30 for the whole month of March, that, and that's our biggest month that we've ever had as far as people getting baptized and coming to know Jesus, and we're believing for even more people getting impacted by Christ in the month of April, but, but on top of that, I mean, you got you to gotta know we started four new connect groups in the last four weeks. Each week, we've started a new connect group. That's more people saying, hey, I can't do this by myself. I need to be in relationship with other people that are learning how to be followers of Jesus. I want to connect, and people stepping up and saying, I'll lead, I'll host. 
toast, I'll open up my home, I'll make brownies, whatever, you know, suffer for Jesus together, right? Um, and it's amazing to watch what's going on. In addition to that, 22 new families just in the last month have started giving financially to the mission. 22 new families are starting to contribute to support the mission here every life. I think that's, that's phenomenal growth. I think if you were to summarize all of this, the church is exploding, and we are scrambling to keep up with all that God is doing in our hearts and lives. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? I think we can celebrate that, but, uh, you know, at the same time, I got to share with you, man, it's, it gets crazy around here. Uh, you, you know, we, we got 190 parking spots. That's probably a fact you never cared to ever know in your life. Um, but it means a big deal because um, if there's no parking, the new people, you're, you're new people and you got here early because you didn't know what to expect. And some of you are like, oh, I'm glad I did, you know, because there wouldn't have been room for me. On average, during this service, did you know we average, there's 190 spaces between our lot and that lot that the amazing business to the north allows us to use um, for free. It's so generous of them. Um, on average, in this service, we average 196 cars. So 190 spaces, we average 196 cars. Where we park, we're not sure. Chuck E. Cheese or on, on, the, back, on the back of the building, wherever. Uh, we're just finding spots. We're making room. We're doing whatever we have to do. Some of you have been parking over there for, for a long time to make room for new people to park up close, and that's amazing. And, and, and what we love is that God has grown his church, and we just find ourselves in a little bit of a, of a pickle because we just started. Normally, when we... When we get to this place of capacity that we are, all you sitting up there in the mezzanine, uh, you guys can wave at the mezzanine up there. Hey, we love you. Yeah, good job. And uh, we get to this spot of capacity and we'll go, hey, will this add a new service? Well, we just added a new service like seven weeks ago. And uh, um, we're kind of like, okay, what do we do now that we just went from three services to four services and we still don't have room? Here's really the, the thing I want you to really consider and pray. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray. We need, I said, I talked to the nine o'clock the same way, so you're not any different, but we need 200 of us to say, hey, me and my family can go to the four or the six o'clock, one of the evening services, and make that my service, where I'll attend, I'll invite, I'll adjust my schedule on a Sunday. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, you don't know. I go hang out with people right after church, and I got this routine, and I sleep in late, and, and I got my thing, and, and we go to Starbucks every week right before, and it's awesome. Don't mess with me, Richie, is what some of you are saying. I know. And I just want to say, don't make me come back there right now, because I really want to reach the world for Jesus one person at a time. And, and I really believe that a simple adjustment in our calendar and our routine can empower us and enable us to reach hundreds more people for Jesus. And so here's, don't fight with me. I just want you to pray. Fight with God on this one, okay? Jesus, do you want me to, to in, enable our church to reach more people for you? Do you want me to or not? Ask him. I dare you. Ask him. What, what does he think about that adjustment? And here's the deal. I don't want you to feel like bad, like, Oh, I have to keep coming to the 11. I'm sorry. Don't. No, 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 no. Don't. Don't. If this is it, this is it. That's awesome. Keep inviting. Keep, you know, squishing in. Keep parking a long ways off. Keep waiting in line for the bathroom. You know, keep doing all these things. It's awesome. And I mean that. And I mean that wholeheartedly. I do not want you to feel bad for coming to this service. But I do want you to pray. And I'm praying that a couple hundred of us would move, us and our family would move to one of those evening services. They're filling up. Man, we had about 100, I think 150, 175 people commit to making our evenings work. And now that's well over 300, 350 people already in the evenings that are, that are connected to Jesus and, and growing. I mean, that's pretty amazing, isn't it, to see what God has done just in the last six, seven weeks. And so uh, I just want to encourage you to be a part of what God is doing this way. And so... Uh, one other thing I want to tell you about, well, there's a couple other things. I, I told you it's going to be a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> we got a worship and prayer night on Tuesday night. This Tuesday night, we're going to meet in this room at 6.30, just till 8. We're going to have child care for any kids five and under. Uh, we want to help you and, and your family be here. And, and we want you to take connect group leaders in the room. I want you to have your connect group here that night at 6.30. If you meet on a different night, don't meet this week. On that night, meet here on Tuesday night at 6.30. And here's why. I really want us to begin to, to prepare our hearts for this Easter season. You're, you're inviting friends and family to Easter. We're going to give you an invite card on the way out. We'll give you a stack of them if you want uh, to help people experience who Jesus is at Easter. 
But you're going to invite like crazy, and then there's still going to be stuff in their lives, resistance, pain, uncertainty, shame. And that's stuff that's like not your deal to really do anything about, but, but we can fight this battle in the spiritual realm. And we're really wanting to get on our knees together as a church, unified on Tuesday night, and, and pray that God would move mountains in people's hearts and lives for them to be here at Easter, for them to experience Jesus and come to know Jesus and begin a relationship with him on Easter. And so Tuesday night... At 6.30, I want everybody that can possibly be here to be here with us in worship and prayer. We'll spend that hour and a half together worshiping and praying. We'll take care of kids. We'll have your older kids in here with you. I'm going to have my girls in here with me. I love for them to experience moments like this as a church. Lastly, I do want to update you on, on Wayne. If you know who Wayne is, our, one of our Connect Group pastors here. Man is, um, has been through a lot and is going through a lot. And, and one of our family goes down the way that Wayne has gone down. We really want to do something as a church, as a people. We want to respond. So four years ago, Wayne was 34 years old, and he had his very first heart attack. you got to know Wayne's story. His dad died when he was 32 of the same heart disease. And so Wayne, you know, at 34 has his first heart attack. A couple of stents get put in. And then he begins a journey of just a whole new life, of being in and out of the hospital, of learning how to cope with a new, really diseased heart and trying to figure that out. And, and then just 12 weeks ago in January, he has his second heart attack. And um, as a church, many of us have rallied during that time, and many of us didn't even know. And, and, you know, some of that's my fault for us just not really knowing what to do or where things were going. And, and, and so Wayne has been literally out of work for the last 12 weeks and, and, and really just in a place of kind of cardiac rehab, trying to get his heart back to a healthy spot. And I'm telling you this because I know some of you are in crazy trials and crisis right now as well. And you understand the turmoil and the strain on him, his wife, his two little girls that have all kinds of questions. Why is dad still home? And what, what are we doing trying to figure out all this new life? And, and um, we want to do something as a church to help these guys. And I'm not sure what that's going to look like for each of us individually. But I think here's the thing that I want you to understand is on, on Tuesday, he was rushed to the hospital again with major chest pain and, and, and two more uh, stints were put in to where he went from five stints to seven now in different arteries in his heart. And um, he's just as sick. And uh, we want to support, help, pray for, care for one of our family in this time. And so here's the thing you got to understand. The doctors have no idea if he'll ever return to capacity to be able to go back to work. They don't know what his heart's going to do. I mean, it's going to be a season of healing and rehab here as he gets going. And I just wanted to make you aware today so that you can be praying, but also this, so that you could be considering what can we do to help? How can we support even more than that? And I just want to ask you this. Some of you in the room are going to go, man, you're doing the math already in your mind. If he's been out of work, he's trying to figure out what the future looks like financially. They got medical bills coming in. You know, all this stuff is kind of piling up on this family. And some of you are going, financially, I want to step in. I want to help some way. We as a church want to be a conduit of blessing and grace to these people. And so I want to encourage you to consider that and pray that way and go, God, what can I do to help? And I'm praying that this would be a testimony to our city of this is the kind of family that we are, that cares for, that steps up, that steps in in times of need, that encourages, that prays for, that really supports in these times. And so, you know, if, if you do want to give financially, just designate that if you would, and we'll make sure every penny that comes in designated in that direction will go to bless these guys and help these guys. If you want to stop by the office, do it in that envelope, whatever you want to do. And, and I'm just praying that God would use us as a family to be the, the church that Jesus has called us to be in this time for Wayne and Jen and their girls. And uh, we're really praying that God is going to work powerfully in this and through this. And so I just want to say this, we got a lot to pray about, don't we, as a church? I mean, you're praying about serving kids, about bringing Easter candy, you're, you're, you're praying about moving service times, you're praying about Wayne and Jen, I mean, there's a lot, right? And I don't want us to lose focus or lose heart in this time and go, wow, man, it just seems like all this craziness, here's the deal, God has already won the victory on this thing right up here, and he has already established his kingdom. And, and here's, our, here's our deal, is our opportunity now is to respond. And I know this, hear me on this. As God is moving so powerfully right now, the enemy hates what is going on. 
and he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to divide you and your marriage. He wants to divide you and your connect group leader. He wants to drive a wedge between you and leaders around here. He wants to, he wants to get you frustrated with me or with whoever else and kind of get us disconnected. Do not let that happen. Fight for unity in moments like this. Trust that God is speaking and leading and working right now, and we've all got to do our part to, to really engage at the, at the level that is going to bring the unity and the, 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 the framework for God to be able to move and work and, and move his kingdom forward through us. And I'm praying that God's going to do that.